All right, started. Um, again, for joining. Um, happy, right? First, first uh, Wednesday of May, so we'll be doing our our monthly webinar, um, which is a, a topic that we've never really discussed before. But one, it is uh, certainly as important now as it ever as it ever has been. Um, it's something that we take very seriously here, and we put a lot of detail um, around the, the migration process. And there's a lot of things that we're able to to leverage this process for to, of course, bring a level of comfort to the customers as well as do a good job, right? Um, so we are we are very fortunate today and blessed to have Lou Valentino with us. You know, first of all, we're, we're very fortunate to have Lou with RapidScale. Um, and I'll let Lou kind of give a little bit of his background and kind of what he does, but, you know, he's certainly a game changer within our business. Um, he's a leader. He does a phenomenal job, and I'm, I'm very happy to have him involved in the projects that, that I do and the ones that I'm, you know, um, involved in, um, as well as the others that we do. So, again, just a quick introduction. So, this is Andrew Lauder. For those of you guys who do not know me, um, Director of the East Region. I'm going on, you know, roughly five years now with Rapid Scale, um, and I've certainly seen um, our business grow um, and develop and get better. But I've, I've seen the market as well kind of adopt, right? And and one of the things that that I've seen, you know, kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly with is, is migrations. Um, they come in all, all you know sizes, shapes, and colors, right? No business is the same. No no company really leverages the same applications the same way. So it's something that we um, we certainly you know you know pay a lot of attention to. Um, so Lou, first of all. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy day. Um, Lou, you want to give us a little bit of a kind of a background on yourself, you know, kind of how you got here, and then, and then you know, what your kind of what your daily um, tasks are and what you're overseeing on, on a daily basis. Sure. Good morning or afternoon, depending on where your time zone is. So my name is Lou Valentino. I'm the Director of Service Delivery. I'm responsible for the project managers and the installation engineers for new customers and existing customers as services are added. I come with 30 years of background experience in IT. I have a certified Lean Six Sigma Green Belt in process and procedure. Uh, I've been brought to the organization to join uh, several, all from a company that have all worked together in the past. And our, our daily tasks are ensuring that we have effective communication with the customers, identifying the times of when they need to have the product installed, work them every step of the way from the discovery process to the discovering, you know, why they're doing what they're doing, how they're doing it, uh, getting it towards the cloud with them, making sure that we explain to them the full migration strategy every step of the way and include them and keep them updated as constantly as possible. So we've been working with Andrew on several customer installs. We've had great success and looking forward to more success with customers. Uh, we're constantly holding Kaizen events, which is continuous in process and procedure improvement, always looking to get better, and at the same time not being so rigid that it's just here's a widget, it's the only one way and not the, there's no other way to do things. We try to make it so that it's customized. Uh, every customer installation is different, and that's where I feel our differentiator is is we can mold and shape according to what the install is and what the requirements are, and I think we're very flexible in that. So, Andrew? So, um, and again, obviously, thank you for everything you do. For for those of you guys that have not had the the um, have not had the chance to work, work with Lou, um, whenever you will, you'll, you'll certainly understand what I'm saying when when I when I you know um, express how appreciative we are of everything he does. Always, this is getting um, recorded. We'll be sending this recording out for, for the folks that weren't able to do it, or if anybody would like to just kind of take a, another once-over um, of what we discussed today, and, and Summer and, and Z will be handling that and, and getting that out to all you guys. So we did a, we did a monthly webinar. I can't remember which, which month it was, but we basically went through some customer kind of objections, right? Um, you know, why they choose, you know, not to go to the cloud, or what kind of objections they give us in, in, on kind of the pre-sale side of getting there. Um, one of them is kind of the the, the fear and, the, and the, the the uncomfortableness around you know moving from either a prem based colo based um, to a cloud right. They know how it works. It works today. Um, there's how it's handled, but they really don't really know how are we going to get there. So it's um, it's something that we come across pretty much daily, which is also a reason why that we've built a pretty detailed process on the front end. 
on the both side to to ensure that, that level of confidence. Um, the, you know, obviously the people and processes aren't ready yet, right? So I mean, that's another thing that we talk about, especially when you have an, an instance where they're looking at moving to desktop as a service. Um, you know, we're changing the behavior of the of the employees and the changing the way they do business. It's for the better, but it is change, and we all know that people don't always like that change. So, um, for us to be able to walk through kind of detailed process of how we onboard, which certainly part of the migration, um, is huge, right? Um, the other piece would be here is you know we haven't defined our cloud strategy, you know, but that's really what we do together. Um, we're going to walk through some documentation and show you these processes and how we really help define strategy. And this can be a couple of things, right? This can be your simple crawl, walk, run, which is, you know, establishing the, the key solutions for your business, such as a 365 or a Mimecast or a DR to kind of help, whether it's built in, in some type of redundancy or if it's, you know, just to get you kind of away from some of the legacy technology you're using today, um, you know, all the way to taking you to virtual desktops or desktop as a service. Um, and the last one is, you know, ready for this, or this isn't. This is too much work, right? We don't have the we don't have the teams in place to be able to dedicate those time and resources to this migration. In case you know, you know, there's there's lots of 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 we can come in and help with that, right? Which is mostly kind of the in-house the in-house expertise that we have around here. So, um, again, we we like to use. The documentation and the process that we have in place on the back end to actually make a clean migration, we want to be able to demonstrate those on the front end to build that level of confidence in the customer that we're going to be able to take care of this. If there's time frames associated to it, um, we make sure how we're able to eat, reach milestones um, to make sure it's a seamless process and make sure they're very comfortable moving forward because this is, this is a change to the business at the end of the day. So for us, I mean, you know, this is one of the things that we talk about. I talk about on a daily basis, and it's really what makes us different. And and Lou kind of um, Lou said mentioned this a little bit around kind of flexibility and understanding the customers and 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 what they do, um, and how they are. You know, you have to be flexible, right? We have to be flexible in in building solution out for a customer because you know, no two customers are alike. No IT staffs are are built the same. There's different, there's different um, levels of experience. There's different, you know, certifications, right? And and there's just there's there's ways we have to essentially kind of augment some of those weaknesses within their business by leveraging some of our our talent that we have internally. So, you know, understanding this going into a migration is key um, to be able to say, you know, again, I'll say this a lot and still that confidence in the customer around what we're doing. So, some kind of different some differentiators that we have um, in house. So for one. We control the experience, right? Luke mentioned it earlier as well, where he's saying that we're kind of we're communicating, we're, we're holding people accountable internally, we're making sure we hit milestones um, and delivering on the back end. So we're controlling that experience because we've got all the in-house resources to do that. Everything that we do, we don't subcontract out engine work. Uh, everything from you know big Office 365 migrations to um, obviously we do a lot with share file, doing the share file stuff. Full, you know, full forklifting or net new builds of, of current infrastructure to go to an infrastructure as a service, and then of course the desktop as a service. Having specialties, uh, they're specialists, I guess you could say, within our business really allows for us to not have any kind of points of migration or points of failure within the migration, so that we can we can make it better for them, right? Um, one thing that we did. I was kind of a part of this early on was, you know, we were noticing whenever we were cutting people over that, you know, we'd have, to, we'd have the environment up and it'd be ready to go, but, you know, we noticed when we did cut over, there'd still be a lot of questions, right? A lot of people didn't do the due diligence on the testing, you know, prior to cutting over or what have you. So we've, we've noticed that by sending somebody on site, typically beginning of the migration to gain familiarity with the business, their workflows, you know, obviously, and build that kind of interpersonal relationship. And then the cut over, right, whenever we are cutting over to have somebody on site, to be able to address needs immediately um, has been a winning a winning model for us, um, and I really don't know how anybody can do it any other way, um, with the exception of having a big a big rust IT team internally um, that has that that has that experience. So it's it's a differentiator. It's something that the customer likes to hear as well because you know we're not just saying oh you know sales side okay guys have fun with migration oh by the way now we cut it over and say okay call support if you need something. It's really not the way. We operate, um, and that's not the way that you win and, and develop a true partnership with a customer. And then the other thing is, is kind of the full management, right? This also goes into kind of encapsulates everything that I just said. 
um, even digging into some of the database stuff and, and, and really kind of setting up that, that full management. Um, Lou, I will um, kind of quick question for you, right? So see a lot of customers, um, let's call small customers that have zero IT to larger customers that have full blown. Um, I'm, I'll keep it real with everybody. This stuff doesn't always go great, right? There's 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 issues that come across on the the small business side. There's um, a lack of understanding around technology and how it works. Um, and on the larger side, there's some complexities within environments and potentially some you know call some some you know ghosts or, or you know graves we dig up and kind of gotcha us along the way with with more complex environments. So you good at this. Um, you know, whenever we have any type of issues, right, and that's kind of getting on the phone with the customer and talking to them. So kind of kind of give us a little bit of an idea of, of how you approach this, right, um, to the customer who's potentially upset by the way things are going. Um, and what, what is the way that you kind of talk to them to calm them down to ensure that they understand that we're doing our job um, and we're doing a good job um, and everything is going to kind of be, you know, copacetic for them? A couple of things that I think also differentiates us is, you know, I'm on the operation side, you're on the sales side, but yet we partner together constantly. So the message that's held to the customer is also held to operation, so there's only one message, and that's we're the one going to be there for you, and we're going to drive this through to the end. And again, not all implementations go thorough, uh, thoroughly without issues. There's applications that you know people are familiar with. Maybe they don't have the vendor contact anymore. Maybe they're using like a six-year-old version of Crystal Reports. But the difference that we come to the table is we have that experience both for small customers and for large customers. Yet you can do the due diligence and go through every single thing that you think you can identify, but then find out that you know Charlie Brown in an off location really needed this application that connected to a government website that uses a Juniper VPN client that you weren't aware of. We're active in that methodology too, and we've been that, and we've done that for different customers. Uh, but we're the first ones on the front, calling them out to call on the and saying, "Hey, this is what we found. This is what we identified. How do we work this out? Oh, okay, do we need to put this person on a, its own individual session host? Do we do need to do a custom GPO? This is the flexibility that we can bring, and we have the experience." of being flexible to be able to help the installations go with less issues. And then as we attack issues, we're right on the forefront. We're on the phone working with your vendor, uh, with your individual IT folks, and we're driving it to resolution. So we're right in there with hands dirty, just as anybody else, trying to drive it to resolution. Um, the other pieces that I think we do really well is we have some of our migrations, and we sit down in the beginning, we go through the installation forms, but as mentioned earlier, there is no one-size-fits-all. And I think that's appropriate, that one size fits all just because every customer's environment is different. But the journey from discovery through implementation to full turnover is an education on both parts, and more importantly, at the end, the customer through us now has a full mapping of what their organization is doing, why they're doing it, what it looks like with the Envisio map of how it's set up, how it operates. I mean, if you think today, all your utility bills, you all pay online, everything is in the cloud. Uh, all of your news you get, it's all through the cloud. Everybody going to the cloud, and the reason why is for our customers, 90% of them, IT is not their primary business focus. So why is an accounting firm doing IT? Why is a financial firm doing IT? They need to focus on what their business is, and then we take care of the back end, which is what we specialize in. Do you, Andrew? I mean, I think no, it's, a, it's a journey, and I think we all learn from it. And at the end, the customer has got a great set of documentation of not only how it's organized, why it's organized in that way and set up, and then what it means to the end customer. And then we're looking for the best end customer experience for the customer so they can be proud of what they've purchased. Yeah, and, and be happy, right? And kind of walk away at the end of the day going, this was the right decision for my business. Because the last thing we want them to do is question whether or not they made, they made the right decision with us. Um, and, and you're exactly right. I mean, you know, in, in short, right, when we do have these, these unexpected, you know, things come up, up um, during the implementation that we, you know, we're not aware of on the pre-sale side, um, you know, one thing we don't kind of wipe our hands and go, listen, guys, we didn't know about this. This isn't our problem. You have to figure it out, right? That's not in, that, that's not in, in our DNA. That's not how we operate. And that's, you know, that goes for the migration as well as the ongoing support, as well, being able to be flexible, make adjustments. Um, and work with the customer to ensure that they're getting, you know, what they expected out of us. 
this one is the customer life cycle. We won't spend too much time on this, um, but just kind of want to give you guys kind of a high-level overview of, of what's expected on a, on a project, right, um, and, and what teams are kind of going into this. So if, on the pre-sale side, right, we're obviously doing a lot of our due diligence. You know, we, we're getting into the weeds. We're understanding the applications. We're understanding the workflows and their dependencies. Management needed, right, is there database? Is there SQL DBA work? Is there Oracle DBA work that's needed? Um, kind of going through it, right? And what is your overall solution going to be? Obviously, we, we try to do our best there. I mean, I'd like to think that we're pretty good at it, uh, especially when we get some of our, our – when we have our SEs involved. Um, but there are things that come up, right? However, um, we're making sure that we're preparing the, the information in order to transition into the migration, the implementation team as soon as possible. So going through real quick um, on this, right, you kind of have going from, from left to right, you have the pre-sale side. Um, and some of this is, you know, you know, relatively easy for you guys to understand, right? Discover, present, tech review, commit, forecast, right? So on and so forth. Um, we all understand how that process works. Now, the, the second piece of this, and one thing I haven't really mentioned, and I've kind of I've put a lot of emphasis on, on the customer being comfortable with, um, with rapid scale to move forward. But really, at the end of the day, we're a channel company, right? We don't get, we don't have customers that aren't brought to us by, by our partner community. So as it's important for you guys, as partners to be comfortable that we are the right company to do business with and we're going to treat your customer right, A, on deploying the solution, um, but B, also to make sure we get it there. Because really, at the end of the day, all these companies, I mean, if, at this point, if you're in business, if you're still in business today, you, you have an infrastructure that works, right? You spend a lot of money, the, the technology works for the most part, um, and you're good there. Your support may suck, but the technology's there. Um, for us, it's, it's really about, you know, how are we going to get you there so you guys can have that confidence in us because it's really, it's really kind of where, where the rubber meets the road. Um, and I'll give a quick, in, real quick, I'll go through this implementation to the So project, um, yeah, I bring on a new customer, right? Um, at the beginning, I'm also there. I obviously have I've always taken pride in staying in, in touch with these projects and, and like to keep my finger on the pulse um, because you know, at the end of the day, the customer really entrusted myself and you to, to this direction, so we'd be there to have their back if something happens. So within each project, we have a project manager that's going to be assigned to them, a dedicated project manager. We'll have typically multiple, multiple engineers, right, implementation engineers. The reason for this could be maybe we've got 365 migration that's going to happen. We've got some, some federation services, so we need our 365 engineer. Um, we've got maybe this is a, a, a desktop as a service for a Citrix deployment, so we're going to have a Citrix engineer. Uh, maybe there's a, a mail migration happening, right? We need exchange engineers. So there's lots of specialists that we have, and there's going to be multiple people that are going to be assigned to these projects. And also, they're going to understand what their roles are going into this. So with that, we have the kickoff calls, and we're obviously reviewing the solution, make sure nothing's changed over the past two to three days since we signed the contract. Um, they kind of start going through that project. Um, we're very big on, on communication. Um, we're very big on weekly calls, as everybody is also. Um, but we, we have to be right and assure that there is um, a high level of communication going to the customer so they're aware of what's going on, especially when it's not any type of, of heavy lifting happening, right, kind of that, that pre-stage side. Um, it really happens on, on the installation piece and the implementation. And I'm, I'm going pretty high level through this um, because like, you guys can kind of see it and understand it. Uh, there's a team that's dedicated to this. It's that same team stays with that customer throughout the life cycle of this implementation through the tank process and into the, and into the, the cutover. Um, from there, even after the cutover, you know, we, we turn it over to support, but as engineers that are familiar with the environment are the ones that are going to be going in there making any type of tweaks, which, which brings me to a quick story, which I always like to tell. I don't know if, if, if you guys have heard this from me or not, but it's an analogy around, around a, 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 an implementation. So I built a house about two years ago, um, and it took your typical 9, 10, 11 months to build the house. We were going on, on vacation for about a week prior to moving in. I basically told the builder, I don't want people coming into the house every single day fixing stuff um, that, should, that shouldn't be overlooked right now, right? So take this week, go through it, test everything out, make sure we've already done our walkthrough, make sure it's no... Um, there's no issues where we have to have people keep coming out. Now, we know there's going to be at some, in some sense, but, you know, let's, let's keep it to a minimum, right? So for us, when our vacation came back, I had people here two, three times a day in and out the house, and honestly, it was, it was a pain. And at this point, I basically look at the builder, and I'm like, I'm happy with this, right? I mean, yes, did you, did you build a nice house? We're very happy with it years later. Of course we are, but, you know, this is a, this is a very big inconvenience for me. 
moved in, moving so pain as it is, but having people kind of coming in and out and, and, and fixing things that shouldn't have not been overlooked prior to. I think of that as the same way as an implementation, right? It's just one of the reasons why we, we put a lot of emphasis on the testing phase um, and get that, that kind of, get that data from those people because we have the environment up before we cut over. Um, it has to be tested. There has to be folder structures in place. There has, applications have to be performing um, to the expectation that the customer needs them to. So that all goes into play with this, and it's very important. If we turn over environment, we cut over environment, and we've got 250 support tickets coming in um, from this customer, and there's stuff that's breaking and stuff that wasn't tested and things that were overlooked, they're not going to be happy, right? And it's going to take us longer to get them happy um, than it will be if we had just done our due diligence on the front end. So we obviously take that piece very seriously. Um, and typically, whenever they're asking, how long is this implementation going to take? 40, 60 days is a normal answer, but you got to understand that I can, we can spin up a server in two minutes, right? We put out a Citrix farm in an hour. Um, what really is going to take the, the bulk of time is going to be the testing. We need to have the buy-in from the customer on this to make sure that they're checking off on things that we're going through um, to make sure that the, that the cutover is seamless as possible. Um, from there, get the other life cycle, right? Obviously, they move into support. Um, from there, we've got, you know, we have our QBRs that we set up with customers. We're going through monitoring reports. We're going through ticket reports. Um, and that stuff is dialed in. We also do build out wikis for customers where we have that transfer to be able to give to the, um, to give to the support engineers for each one of these customers. Anything to add? Um, to, I know I kind of gave it on a sales level, but anything that you want to add to, um, to kind of the life cycle and the evolution? Yes, one of the things that's important is uh, we don't just dump it and turn it over to support and say, there you go. We do an inline support where we sit down, we write a complete wiki that includes who the original installation engineer is, any special handling instructions that we need for the customer. We sit down with our support group a week before turnover, go through each line of the wiki to make sure that they're comfortable with the support and the environment that we built. Not to mention, we go through a full QA process before we even do a turnover, and we validate it so that the original engineer that did the installation is not the engineer that does the QA. We do a full separation of duties to make sure that it conforms to what our standards are and make sure that we pass all the QAs and do all the testing, HA availability, failover, fail back, disaster recovery testing, failover, fail back, et cetera, to make sure, like and about building the home, everything works so we're not submitting tickets later. For the week during the turnover, we're right there hand in hand with our support engineers handling any issues that would happen to crop up. And again, if we have to go into reactive mode because something wasn't brought up on the original discovery process, we come to the table with the experience to turn that over quickly, get it addressed, uh, promote an image as quickly as possible, and then be able to get P functionality back as quickly as possible. Uh, through the whole process of going through support and then turning over, uh, even after, and it's been several months, the original engineer that did the install and was involved with it then disseminates all that information to the other engineer. So if they happen to be on vacation and the ticket comes in, somebody else can take over. So full alerts of response and responsibility to be able to support our customers when they are in life. Blue, and that's, I mean, that's 100% spot on. So one thing that we do, um, and and this is you know this is this is the due diligence that we have to do on the on the on the pre-sale side. So the more information that that I can gather of a customer's current environment and you know the process of 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 bringing them to cloud, right? And we're talking about these net new builds. Um, are we doing kind of a forklift approach? You know, how are we doing this? All this is very important. Um, so this needs to be detailed out. And the reason why it's detailed out and where it's detailed out is in our statement of work. I'm going to show you guys kind of a, a, a real-life statement of work from a customer that um, that brought on recently and um, to kind of show you this. But just to kind of hit high level on some of the things, obviously, who, who's, who's going to be the point of contact and who are the stakeholders within the business, right? Um, is, there an IT, is there an IT person really in your business? If not, right, who is the best person to talk to, um, and and we get this a lot. I mean, I mean, we deal within as a pure managed cloud computing company. We have to deal a lot within you know kind of that that 25 to 150 users where um, they may have one or none. Typically, none somewhere in the 25 to 50 space. Um, we have to figure a lot of things out for, them, which is you know not always fun, but it has to happen because we essentially are are, are an extension of their business from IT. So then, who stakes? 
stakeholders are, um, what are they doing, right? That, that's pretty easy. Obviously, the applications. I mean, this, this whole thing, the whole cloud space in general is about it's about hosting and, and deploying applications, right? And core line of business applications for the business. That's what this whole thing is. So we understand what those are. What are the independencies that are happening within those, right? Is there a database associated to them? Workflow. So obviously, I'm understanding that going into the process. Um, are there any special applications, proprietary or licensing to consider? We need to know that stuff, right? I mean, we if we find out whenever we start migrating that they've got um, a legacy uh, accounting application that's still running on Windows 2003, that's a problem, right? Because Windows 2003 is no longer supported operating system. So stuff we need to really understand going into this, and then what is the migration strategy to get to that point? Um, you know, support. Um, we obviously can, can manage the environment, but there's, there's individual applications that have limitations on what we can fix. For example, would be a code. If there's a coding issue within the software, they had a version upgrade, with software, with some things are breaking, we can't fix that. So we really want to understand if you've got software, you've got vendor support, so that we can work directly with them. And we do work directly with those guys. We don't really put it on, on the burden on the customer to deal with it. Um, we're dealing with it with them. Obviously, dates, right? There's some type of event that's coming up that we need to hit. Um, seeing this a lot, right? Especially whenever. We're putting over customers who are with an existing an incumbent hosting provider, and their contract is coming up to the end of date, um, or their terms coming up to the end of date. We need to understand what those what those time frames are, so we're making sure that we are assigning the appropriate resource to that um, to make sure that we're we're hitting those dates for them. Um, growth plans, right? We certainly want to understand. You and a company, right? Do you have a lot of acquisitions or mergers that you're looking to come up with? If so, we need to understand those. So that we can kind of prepare for them and make sure that we're, you know, we're, we're putting together the right environment to be able to scale and we understand where, that, where that's going to happen. Um, obviously, current pain points, right? Your current, if you're with an incumbent or you're with an MSP, um, they have the keys to the kingdom, right? They not even have domain admin credentials. Some we need to probably know. Right? Um, how are we going to get this data from them? At the end of the day, it's the customer's, it's the customer's intellectual property, so we have to get that. Uh, how are we getting that data is one thing. What is their willingness to cooperate going to be? So those are all conversations that we need to have with them. And then, of course, any outside agencies that interact with your environment, right? Contractors, third parties, you need to share data, sharing data, how are we going to set that up? You know, obviously to make sure that everything is, is, is secure there. Uh, Lou, anything to add to this? I know some of this stuff is things that you're always looking to gain um, to get from me prior to, but anything that you want to add to, to this kind of this list that we have, which is really high level? Sure, and, and this is an evolved uh, process over time that we had discovered uh, because we've had customers from a very large lending firm that knew everything they wanted to do, how to get in the cloud. They were in a current provider. They knew all their applications great. Then we had a nonprofit of about 600 people who have had an 80% turnover of their IT in the last five years. None of the original people that worked there knew what any of the systems were. And then we go in and we do the discovery to find this onion that we just have to keep peeling back and peeling back between you know a 17-year-old Unix application that runs all this healthcare HIPAA information to a network that's all run by uh, Unix gateway servers that uh, nobody has any passwords to. Uh, these are the probing questions. You know, does the security system interact with this? Does the phone system interact? But these are things where we really try to dig in to get as much information as possible because preparation is 99% of successful implementation. It's finding out the stakeholders, finding out what's going on. You know, you don't want to get into the 11th hour and then discover somebody's got web filtering. We never ask the question. You know, mm -hmm. we want it to be a one-for-one -one environment, but more importantly, when we ask what are your goals for the next one to three years, yes, we can give you the exact same solution you currently have, but maybe that's not where your business wants to go. And those are the conversations that we go deeply and have with you to find Find out what is your business strategy, what is your plan, where do you want to go, and then where do you see yourself in the next five years. This helps us size and scale environments so that we can be prepared for your future growth. Uh, we are asking these probing questions because we learn more about your business, and for some of our companies, they actually learn more about their inner business because other people have set it up. Many people haven't been there for the last five, ten years. Uh, helps the organizations and us to learn more about the business, why decisions were made, and for what reasons, and then is it efficient enough? And we always try to start with the end in mind. Where do you want to be? Now let's work backwards and figure out where we need, what we need to do to get you there. So, yeah, that's that's perfectly, and thank you for that. And, um, 
I'm going to kind of go, you know, kind of skip through this um, this slide. I want to get to to kind of walk through a quick scope of work. I know we're running short on time, um, and I appreciate those those folks that have um, that have stayed, and you know, I certainly understand if anybody has other calls they have to jump on. Um, but this is very important because this is an executable document that we put on the customer that we agree upon as the as the project goes. This right here is is what we put in place to really bring that level of confidence to the customer around, you know, don't tell me, show me, right? So um, in this case, this covers out 250 seats, right? E each of these is going to be tailor-made for each customer. There's, there's a template they use, but it's all going to be tailor-made information for them based off of their based off their environment and what we're going to be accomplishing for them. So we're kind of going through and obviously set the, the appropriate business requirements, the current environment, right? 256 employees, core line of business applications, um, so on and so forth, what they can have for the firewalls in place and, 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 and so on. Um, obviously, the contact information, we're going to have that built in there. Who's going to be the PM on, on the deal? Um, then we kind of get into the scope of work, right? We're kind of go through some of the, the expectations, right, you know, such as things that are, that are out of our control that we're not going to be able to actually do for them, right? But we certainly will, will, will find a way to work around that. Um, and make sure we're right. So you know, obviously preparation, provisioning, and so everybody does know this document, after we sign a customer, we execute the agreement, we execute this statement of work, prior to having a kickoff call, self, um, the C that was involved in it, Lou, and who, whatever the, the PM and those, and those implementation engineers that are involved in this, we're having an internal call. This is going to be for a knowledge transfer. We're going to walk through the statement of work. If they've got questions about something, we're able to answer those questions to make sure that Whenever we do have this kickoff, we're not putting, uh, you know, four or five people on the phone that have no clue what's going on. Everybody's on, everybody's on a kind of lockstep in working with this. We understand what the expectations are. That way we're not asking the same questions over and over to the customer, and they feel like that we're not, you know, we're not listening and we're not competent on our side. So that's one of the reasons why this is, this is very big. Um, Proving, obviously, we go through specking out the servers, what's going to be in there from the, from the firewall side. We're going to have, you know, high availability. Um, with that, meaning is, you know, is there going to be two of them, right? Um, go out mail, right? So this is all, you know, step-by-step -step process, data replication. You know, what is the, what is the, 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 um, the order that we're going to do these? Um, to see if there's any type of, of interdependencies, we need to understand that. Um, you know, the verification, the migration on the application servers, you know, go, no, go, right? Stuff like this. It's all testing. This is all stuff that we're doing on the back end, right? Um, and then we get into the actual testing phase for for the customer as well, where they're going in through, you know, if, if, if it's a virtual desktop environment and they're logging into the desktop, they're testing the applications, right? They're looking at their folder structure, um, and we kind of go through that. So very important, and this is something, again, that we go through with this customer, you know, assumptions and responsibilities. We're going to make sure that, you know, if, if there are certain responsibilities that the customers have, we're outlining that so everybody's on the same page. Um, test acceptance, right, kind of so on and so forth. Um, have a breakdown of the cost associated to the implementation, right, so that we have that. And then, again, this is this is an executable document. So signing this, they're agreeing to this work, agreeing to the process that we have in place. Can we change and deviate off of this SOW as the implementation goes? Of course. We're always gonna, there's always going to be stuff that happens and comes up. Um, this is a baseline for us to have a knowledge transfer to, to my implementation team to ensure that they're prepared for this, they understand if there's milestones, they understand if there's some, any potential complexities, and overall what the expectations were that we set, um, that we set with the customer. That being said, kind of go through that real quick. Um, I know we're kind of short on time, but I wanted to see if we could, if we could, could take a few questions, some or if we've had any, any come through that we can bang out real quick. One. Um you know, if rapid scale has helped software companies migrate from on-prem to being a true SaaS provider? So, I mean, we, we do have that, right? So, and we saw that a lot very early on when companies were looking to move from kind of server-based model to moving a SaaS. You know, typically when we're standing up that environment on our end, how those customers are going to be accessing that data is, is kind of up to them, right? Some, some choose to do like a Citrix published, a published application through Citrix. Some want to have it be a, a web-based um, accessibility, but yes, we can certainly do that. We ha we've had those conversations. Um, we understand how that works, and, and early on, these software companies they were kind of uncertain about how to do that, right? Especially when you know the the actors and, and the hyperscalers of the world were um, kind of very raw, and there was no really support around them. Um, we had a lot of those conversations, and, and we do do that. We have done it. We have done in the past, and we still do do it today. Most a lot what we did it with the EMRs and, and the EHRs within the healthcare space. 
to go with more um, that just came in. What's your sweet spot for number of desktop users? It's a good question, and it, it, it's, it's kind of a, and I hate to answer because it's a broad, um, it's kind of a broad answer. So we see them, I mean, I think that the textbook, if you ask me, like, pick one customer that, that is the absolute perfect fit for you guys, it would be relatively to that, that scope of work that we sent over, 250 employees, multiple locations, um, hair company. You know, they had two guys on IT that were relatively um, kind of proficient, right, but they were, they, were, they were more dangerous enough to really help us out and, and kind of help streamline that process. Um, I see that kind of 100 to 500, if you want to look for a gap, that's kind of a real sweet spot where we're going to have a lot of opportunity. Do we go up market? Yeah. Do we have, you know, the thousands, you know, the four to 5,000 seat customers? Um, yes, we do. Um, but from a day-to-day, -day, you know, really that, that 100 to 500 or call 50 to 500 is going to be, is going to be where we're going to see the most opportunity together and have the best business case on a consistent basis around putting together a solution that's going to benefit that business. Yeah, just one comment on that too, on that user base. Keep in mind, when you're in the 4,000 to 5,000, you can get the widget one way with no customizations, period. You know, scale it that large, and I think that that's where we enter that real sweet spot, which basically says for that 50 to, you know, two, 3,000 users, we delve up the number of uh, end desktops per session host. We do some customizations. We can put some people into some certain groups. We can be flexible. And I think that's what's what really differentiates is that within that sweet spot, we offer still the customization, whereas other organizations, as you start getting larger, everything has to be exactly the same. Yeah, to that, I mean, and, and, you know, I said that kind of 50 to 500, right? And a lot of that is because um, they're going to be needing to leverage some management on the back end, which is where we, you know, we shine, right, which is, you know, being experts in, 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 on, on what we do, rolling out a, a Citrix environment, sending somebody on site, down those, those locations, standardizing across the board, and managing on the back end, um, where, again, we do go up market, we go enterprise, we have customers that are four or 5,000 seats that are doing this. Um, there's more few and far between, especially within kind of the channel and within the space that everybody plays in, um, where that mid-market, you know, that SMB to mid-market customer is, um, is really where, where we're going to see the most, we're going to be able to add the most value to that business. So thank you, everybody. I apologize again for, for running over I me. And honestly, we can, we can talk on this all day. I'm, I'm pretty passionate about this subject personally because, again, I've been here for a little while. We've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? And I kind of know what it takes to have successful implementation, um, you know, which is the people processes and, and the systems, right? So um, you know, hope you guys, you know, were able to get something out of this. Um, you know, certainly if you have any questions, please feel free to, to ask us. Um, happy to talk through this. Every customer that we work with, we do a scope of work. We can't, we can't push an order through the system unless the scope of work is, is, is signed off by the customer. And that's from a 100-seat you know, uh, exchange all the way to you know, a 500-seat um, for desktop as a service. Everybody's getting the same level of treatment. Everybody's getting the same level of service no matter what the solution. Um, and we certainly pride ourselves on that. We feel like that's, that's a winning formula for us for us and a differentiator. So thank you, everybody. Lou, again, thank you for obviously being with us, you know, being, being a powerful presence within our organization to ensuring that these, these implementations go well. Um, you know, thank you for the time today. I know you're busy. And um, if anybody has any questions for us, just let us know. Um, and, and certainly happy to, um, to help out. Hope you guys all have a great day. Happy selling and look forward to uh, hearing from you all very soon. Thank you.